I didn't think the 21st century could get any more bizarre, but things can always get weirder. The Houthis have proven that. The who? Oh, just your average Jew-hating, anti-American, singing, dancing, Yemeni terrorist pirates whose fan club includes TikTok influencers and even some college students. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Like I said, we've entered the weirdest timeline. So what's going on? Who are these guys? And why are some young people supporting them? I want to start with synchronized dancing. I really do. But before we can get there, I got to give you some background on Yemen. Despite its natural resources, Yemen has never been the most stable or prosperous country. Its neighbor, Saudi Arabia, has a vested interest in keeping it that way. Saudi wants to be the biggest, baddest player on the block. And for decades, it's been doing everything it can to keep Yemen weak and divided. Not that Yemen needs a lot of help in that department. They've fought multiple civil wars, including a really ugly one back in the 90s. And because Saudi Arabia is always looking for a foothold into Yemen, they backed both sides, changing allegiances depending on who was winning. Sneaky. I see you, Saudi Arabia. Their tactics worked. And by the end of the war, the Saudis had cemented their influence on Yemen's government. And then they started funding Wahhabi clerics who showed up in Yemen looking for converts. Well, Yemen's religious minorities did not like that. Up in Northern Yemen, the Houthi tribe decided to do something about it. See, the Houthis follow a minority version of Islam known as Zaydism, and they were sick of the Saudis meddling, proselytizing, and discrimination. But the Saudis weren't their only enemy. They also hated their weak and corrupt government. And they really hated the United States, but we'll get back to that. So they got organized, forming a group officially known as Ansar Allah, or the Partisans of God. Though these days, most people just know them as the Houthis. At first, the Houthis were mostly interested in cleansing Yemen of corruption, which meant getting rid of Saudi influence. And I get that. The Saudis are, you know, not the nicest guys. And religious discrimination is always wrong, but don't get it twisted. The Houthis aren't some noble underdog fighting to establish a free and democratic Yemen. They're religious fundamentalists who murder civilians, imprison journalists, blockade humanitarian supplies, torture anyone they suspect might be LGBTQ+, and restrict women from doing, well, basically anything. And like some other Yemeni groups, they practice slavery, including forced labor and child marriage. So the fact that they're fighting against Saudi Arabia, which also has a terrible human rights record, doesn't make them good guys. As they say on my favorite subreddit, everyone sucks here. Things really started to heat up in 2004 when the Houthis picked a fight with the Yemeni government. That fight lasted for years, a vicious cycle of on-again, off-again violence. It was during one of these on periods that the Houthis also started clashing with Saudi forces across the border. As you can imagine, the Saudis were not about that. They figured they could send a few guys to take care of this little rebellion, and they'd go right back to meddling in Yemeni politics. Instead, they got their butts handed to them. The tribal militia managed to kill more than 100 Saudi fighters. Even worse, they started to gain influence, particularly among other Zaydis, who make up more than a third of Yemen's population. By the time the Arab Spring rolled around 2011, the Saudis started worrying for real, because if the Houthis were feisty before, the Arab Spring turned up their passion to 11. Their gains attracted the attention of a powerful backer, Iran. It's a win-win for the two of them. The Houthis get the Iranian regime's money, while the Iranian regime gets more regional influence. Say what you want about the Houthis, but they're pretty influential. By 2015, they'd overthrown Yemen's government and taken over the capital, kicking off yet another civil war. Life in Yemen has never been a picnic. But when the Houthis overthrew the government, they plunged Yemen into hell. Because the Saudis and their allies weren't just gonna let the Houthis take over, they began shelling Houthi-controlled areas into oblivion. And they weren't careful about distinguishing between civilians and fighters. Thousands of civilians have died, and thousands more have been maimed by IEDs and landmines. Millions of Yemenis have fled their homes, some of them multiple times. Most of Yemen is starving or malnourished. The country's infrastructure has buckled. Millions of people lack access to healthcare, to education, to sanitation facilities. And Yemenis living in Houthi-controlled areas also have to contend with an almost absolute lack of freedom, particularly if they're women or minorities. It's a horrific tragedy, and it's been going on for over a decade. But that's not why the Houthis are making headlines these days. No. What? They're in the news because they decided to get involved in another war. One that involves their two biggest enemies, America and Israel. Why America? 
Well, they have a lot of reasons, but here's a big one. The US sells a lot of weapons to the Saudis, weapons that they've used to obliterate Yemeni infrastructure. What's their deal with Israel? After all, the two countries don't share a border. Plus, Israel has never once commented publicly on the Houthis. It's got its own fundamentalist terrorist groups to worry about, you know? It turns out, the Houthis think a lot about Israel. Their flag sets out their order of priorities. God is the greatest, death to America, death to Israel, a curse upon the Jews, victory to Islam. This is a lot, so let's unpack it. God is the greatest is pretty self-explanatory. Fundamentalist religious groups tend to be all in on the guy upstairs. Death to America is pretty cringe, but it's also not surprising. For one, it's borrowed from the Houthis' mentors, the Iranian regime. Plus, you know there's the whole American sells weapons to the Saudis that they then use to bombard Yemen thing. Even death to Israel isn't that surprising. It's one of the rallying cries of the Iranian regime, which refers to Israel as little Satan. And the Houthis have learned a lot about propaganda from Iran and its proxies. Plus, I'm pretty sure Islamic fundamentalists are honor bound to hate Israel. It's like in their handbook or something. But a curse upon the Jews, that's a new one. The Houthi leader who adopted the phrase explained that the Jews are, quote, the ones who move this world, who spread corruption in this world. I don't know whether to be flattered or insulted. I'm not sure that the Houthis have ever met a Jew, considering they've all been ethnically cleansed from Yemen, but clearly we loom large in their minds. To be fair, the Jews have been in the news a lot lately, and everyone from the San Francisco City Council to your average fundamentalist terror group has weighed in. But the Houthis weren't going to let anyone steal their thunder. They wanted everyone to know whose side they're on in this war between Israel and Hamas. And as all the best PR firms know, the most effective way to announce your loyalties is to release a highly choreographed music video. This isn't their first music video aimed at Israel. If you ask me, it's definitely their catchiest. I'm not sure what kind of reaction the Houthis expected, but this is what they got. Like nearly half a million other Israelis, these soldiers have Yemeni ancestry, and they're using traditional Yemeni dance to mock the Houthis. But the Houthis are doing a little more for the war effort than just learning synchronized dances. They've also been attacking merchant ships in the Red Sea and firing missiles at US and British warships. Thanks to the Iranian regime, they've got a pretty nice arsenal of cheap drones and various ballistics, and they use them liberally, no matter who is running the merchant ships or where the ships are headed. Why attack ships? Well, the Houthis say they're doing it in solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza. It's unclear how exactly disrupting global trade helps Palestinians, but hey, I guess you can't show solidarity with ridiculous music videos alone. Though don't worry, they don't let anyone stop them from dancing. As you might imagine, these constant attacks have seriously disrupted global trade. Some companies have even begun rerouting their ships, taking a much longer route to avoid Houthi pirates. In an effort to stop the piracy, the US and UK have bombed military targets in Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. And yet, some Americans are supporting the Houthis' attacks on merchant ships. Far-left movements have released statements applauding the Houthis' principled actions, solidarity, and right to resistance. Now, some pro-Palestinian protesters have another catchy slogan to add to their arsenal. Do you think they know that the Houthis literally practice slavery? Should we tell them? But the Houthis really took off among young people when a Yemeni social media influencer posted a selfie on one of their captured ships. The 19-year-old has become something of an internet heartthrob, with comments calling him a hot pirate and Tim Houthi Chalamet. As far as anyone knows, he's not actually a Houthi or a pirate, just a teenager who admires them. No one is sure what's gonna happen with the Houthis. Are they gonna keep up the attacks? Will they make their way up to Israel to open another front in its war against Hamas? And most importantly, when are they releasing another banger? Come on guys, I bet if you try hard, you can make it to the top of the charts. In all seriousness, the Houthis are easy to mock, and God knows we all need reasons to laugh these days. But we also shouldn't let them distract us from the fact that they've helped turn their country into the world's worst disaster zone. And if we really wanna show solidarity to people in crisis, the Houthis are not the group we should be backing.